So I really feel badly for maybe it's a younger kid, maybe 18, 19 years old. They're trying to figure out what's going on politically in this country, or maybe they've just had a political awakening in their late 20s and they want to figure out what's going on. They want a commentator that they can watch, that they can trust, and they're not getting it from anywhere. They're not getting it from Jimmy Dore. They're not getting it from David Pakman. There, there are very few places that you can go and get honesty. That's the reality. They blow up Building 7. Uh, they do JFK. Uh, they do Libya. They do Afghanistan for 20 years. I mean, there isn't a thing they haven't lied to you about. They did COVID. Uh, so why wouldn't they? You, you talk, do, you th- do you think that's beyond the pale, that they would rig an election in the United States? All right, let's do another type of segment that many have requested, which I don't know if the audience is interested in. I am going to review with you what seems to me something going very wrong with the comedian political analyst Jimmy Dore. I'm going to play a clip for you here of uh, Jimmy Dore from the Jimmy Dore show where he seems to be expressing that he has wholesale accepted a handful or more major conspiracy theories that have been floated over the last many years. And my concern with this is I'm going to play a clip of Jimmy Dore and a clip of Chris Hedges in a moment praising Dore. I don't recognize the left here. So this is not about me gatekeeping and saying, listen, if Jimmy calls himself left, I'm not the person who's going to come in and say no. But similarly to what we saw with Tulsi Gabbard, who now is speaking at Mar-a-Lago and she's speaking at CPAC and she would like to be Trump's VP. I don't recognize leftism anywhere there. And there were people in 2016 saying Tulsi Gabbard is the only real leftist here, totally bamboozled, snowed by her. There were people writing to me saying, David, you've jumped the shark. It's Jimmy Dore who really represents the left. I just don't see the left here. And I admit I haven't seen any of Jimmy's clips for a while now. I didn't realize it had gotten this bad. Let me set this up for you in this 54 second clip. Jimmy guesses that the 2024 election will be rigged for Joe Biden, which Trumpian narrative, of course, uh, Ken Block and other actual experts have looked at 2020. There was no rigging. There was no substantive fraud, more than a few dozen votes that many of them seem to have accidentally uh, been, you know, someone who voted absentee and then died and their vote was counted. No conspiracy. Florida Democrats explain cancellation of state presidential primary. They cancel the primary. You know, Biden had opponents in this upcoming election, primary election, and they weren't allowed to run. So was the past uh, presidential election, was the general election, um, was, was it rigged? No, it wasn't. There's no evidence of that. In fact, Trump tried to rig it and overturn it illegally. There is evidence of that. But for Jimmy to come out and say that he's concerned that it would be rigged, given that a presidential primary was canceled where Biden had opponents, absolutely. I mean, he has the right, he has the right to have that fear. Or a junior who voted and it was counted as senior, even though senior was dead. Nothing substantive. And in saying that 2024 will be rigged, Jimmy Dore goes, they blew up Building 7 and they did JFK. Okay, so the Building 7 thing. So when the Twin Towers were attacked, when they were hit by commercial jets, passenger jets, there was a third skyscraper that fell, and that's the Building 7 thing. And Jimmy, I don't know if he's come out and said it, but he's heavily insinuated that it was imploded. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, why would the government do that? Why would that be on the top of their agenda? That's something they have to rebuild, and that's going to cost millions, you know, millions and millions of taxpayer dollars, maybe a billion. I don't know how much those cost. So why? what's in it for them? If they want to do mass surveillance, they can do it anyway based on the two jets that hit the other buildings. Unless you're saying the U.S. was somehow behind that. That is... You know, Adam Carolla years ago said, you know, they're, they're, they're in the, they're in the, you know, they're in the meeting and they're talking about bringing down the Twin Towers. Let's say it was an inside job. And they say, okay, let's, why don't we fly a jet into one of the buildings? And then somebody else stands up. He's like, why don't we do both of them? 
his, his response was, hey, dummy, you're creating more work for us. All we need to do is one. Why do we need to do two? So it doesn't make any sense that they would bring down that other building. It just doesn't make any sense. Plus, there's no evidence of it. It's very likely that that came down because of all the rubble, et cetera, that was hitting it from the other buildings. So, Jimmy, you're making yourself look really bad in here. So I give one check mark for Jimmy, one for David Pakman. You see how it, what's going on? It's like you, you, can't, you can't trust either one of them. We're never going to know what happened with the JFK thing. But the most likely scenario is it was the Chicago outfit who was uh, who helped get J JFK elected to begin with, the, the mafia group in, in Chicago, which had, was part of La Cosa Nostra, which had spread its tentacles throughout the U.S. They helped them win in, I think it was, Min it was Minnesota or Wisconsin. And then they tried to bring down the mafia. <laughs> Robert F. Kennedy had those hearings. So of course they're they're going to be upset with you. So you know, and they can trace back Lee Harvey Oswald's ties to to the Chicago outfit, and he fired the first shot. It looks like, and then the second shot was an accident. His Secret Service guy. This is the most likely scenario. There's a documentary about it. Accidentally shooting him from behind. Who knows? You're never going to find out one way or the other. So let's throw the one out. But just assume that that, that was an inside job. Is That's a real stretch. They did COVID. That was gain-of-function research. That was the laboratory in Wuhan where they're trying to make viruses stronger and stronger so they can find out ways of um, defeating the virus. Um, and it escaped the lab. Again, there was, there's no evidence of intent there. There's no evidence of intent. They did Libya, they did Afghanistan, and they did COVID. This is the left now. This is a scary left. Take a look at this. So it's, it's going to be uh, Biden or Trump. It looks like it's going to be Trump, but not, not uh, necessarily. I, look, I think they're going to probably rig it. That's my guess. Uh, they who? Hmm. Why wouldn't they? Like, of course they. Why wouldn't they? They blow up Building Seven. Uh, they do JFK, uh, they do Libya, they do... What? The sit what? Afghanistan for 20 years. I mean, there isn't a thing they haven't lied to you about. They did COVID. They did COVID? Uh, so why wouldn't they? You, you, talk, you, you think that's beyond the pale, that they would rig an election in the United States? So um, I think they'll do anything, uh, including turning us into a transparent banana republic which is what they've done in the prosecution of uh donald trump uh russia gave from the whole thing and so um they're gonna get their wars and they got them and donald trump was a a speed bump in them getting their wars this is extraordinarily serious 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 brainworms. i don't know whether to call them maga brainworms, but there's no leftism in there there's maybe alluding to some faux populist rhetoric about how they are doing all of these things that are bad for the average person, maybe like being super charitable. I don't see any leftism left there. What I see there is conspiracy brain. And then they always love to say, well, you're using the word conspiracy simply to as a as a pejorative. Well, in one sentence, you're wrapping in that the people who did building seven and did covid. You know, the whole thing about covid, a lot of people didn't even believe it was real in the beginning. They thought it was completely a farcical, which is insanity. A lot of people I knew. But th they were upset about the lockdowns. Again, you have to look at the government's agenda. Why would they want lockdowns? Why would they want to to write free? to write, to give money, free money to people, to write checks and have the economy destroyed. Why would that be on their agenda? <laughs> so no, they didn't, they didn't want COVID. That, that was a, that was an absolute accident. It was a horrible accident. There shouldn't have been gain of function research, but it was an accident. This is the same as Tulsi Gabbard or Dave Rubin or whoever, then fine. It's just another right wing bomb thrower. But if there are still people who recognize leftism in this kind of content, I want to hear from you. What left wing principles are we seeing here? I can enumerate my left wing principles 
and they relate to economic justice and how taxation should be done and what education policy should be and a respect and understanding for empiricism while understanding that also when you mix the interests of large corporations with empiricism, you get something like big pharma, which has done lots of good and also has to be very closely regulated because sometimes it does bad. Right. I can put together a package that's very clearly there's no place other than the left on which my ideology can exist. I don't see leftism here now. Just one other clip, and this is kind of a bummer, too. Here's Chris Hedges. Another individual who I, I just is there still leftism here or is it uh, a lot of this at the way what I would end up actually calling this is contrarian anarcho libertarianism. That's kind of what this is. Here's Chris Hedges placing Jimmy Dore alongside comedians like George Carlin and Richard Pryor as if as if Jimmy now forget about the political analysis. The political analysis is actually part of his. He, he's one of the top comedians of all time with this sort sort of socio political commentary. I don't know what the hell's happened to Chris Hedges either. It's sad. Joining me to discuss the transformation of comedy from an art form rooted in the counterculture to one that has largely become a megaphone for power is Lee Camp, who like the comics of another era, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, Mort Stahl, Bill Hicks, and George Carlin, and a handful of his contemporaries, including Jimmy Dore, is not afraid <laughs> to use his razor sharp wit. It's very difficult for me. Oh, there might be two more words here. Against our real enemies. Against they use their razor sharp wit against our real enemies. When I see Richard Pryor and George Carlin, it doesn't strike me that Jimmy Dore is part of that. And I guess Chris Hedges thinks it is. So listen, this seems like a perverted sort of you might call this the post left or the ex left. I don't know. I want to hear from you if I am misunderstanding. So it looks like a dominating victory for David Pakman. If it wasn't for the fact that he had to drag Chris Hedges into this, that's very suspect. Why did he drag Chris Hedges into this? Because he's still trustworthy. And just because he had made an off hand remark praising Jimmy Dore, Chris Hedges has never gone astray. You know, a great book that he recently wrote, America the Farewell Tour, great information in that. So it's very suspect that David Pakman uh, brought Chris Hedges into this. There was no reason to. And now I'm being conspiratorial because I don't know why you so would do that. So David Pakman is very much behind the Democratic Party and Joe Biden. It's kind of like MSNBC, a little bit better, a little bit more logical. He's not like overt, whereas MSNBC is literally a part of the Democratic Party. He's more just a supporter of the Democratic Party and Joe Biden. So he doesn't question authority. He doesn't, really quite, he doesn't look into the corruption from the Democratic Party. And then Jimmy Dore believes Building 7 was imploded. He believes, he insinuates that COVID was intentional. Um, you know, he has all these, so, you know, the, you can't believe either one of them. Two guys that I really like, really smart, really informative, funny, and really enjoyable show, do dissidents. They've got a partnership basically with Jimmy Dore. So they never attack Jimmy Dore. And, you know, he's helped platform them. Um, Russell Dobular hosts the Jimmy Dore show. These guys are really intelligent. They cannot believe. I don't believe that they believe everything that Jimmy Dore says, but they've got to keep, keep quiet because he, you know, gives them a platform. It's got to be, t I, I would definitely watch them. I would subscribe to them. They're very good. I really enjoy their show.